What is going down, Niner Empire YouTube? And welcome to another edition of Danny Golding TV. The 2024 NFL season is here. We're already at week two as the Niners took care of business week one on Monday night against the Jets. A few hours before the game, the news came out that CMC was, was ruled out. Now, we all knew he was dealing with a calf injury. We did not know how serious it was. We all expected he would go week one. But just a few hours before the game, he gets scratched out. Jordan Mason, filling in for him, though, has 28 carries, 147 yards, scores a touchdown. Hell of a performance by Jordan Mason. And just yesterday, it was announced that the Niners officially put Christian McCaffrey on injury reserve. He's going to miss at least the, f the first four games of the season, which I think will probably be at least the first five games of the season. Which, it's not only bad news for the faithful, it's bad news if you're a fantasy football player, if you're a sports gambler. Christian McCaffrey was the number one overall pick in everyone's fantasy league. <laughs> and now CMC is not only... The Niners' best offensive player. He's the best running back in the fucking NFL. So not having CMC for the first four to five games is a big loss for the Niners. That being said, if Jordan Mason plays as well as he did against the Jets, which there's no guarantee that'll happen, but if he does, if he's able to just continue right where he left off, the Niners are got nothing to worry about because the only thing that matters is having a healthy CMC come the second half of the season, come the playoffs. Now, if the Niners are able to have a healthy Christian McCaffrey for the second half of the season, then they should still be favored to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. But Jordan Mason, like I said, has to continue where he left off from last week. And if not, we're probably going to have to see some Debo Samuel in the backfield, just like in 2021. But hey, speaking of running backs, I'm wearing my number 21 Frank Gore jersey because during halftime on Monday night, Frank Gore was inducted into the 49ers Hall of Fame. Another Niners legend, Vernon Davis, his longtime teammate, gave the speech. And Vernon Davis is also someone who I actually got a chance to meet in February for Super Bowl week, so that was, which was an awesome experience, and it was awesome to see Vernon Davis and Frank Gore, two legends from not only the Harbaugh teams, but from even going back to Mike Nolan. Man, Frank Gore, as far as 49er players that I actually got to watch and experience, of course, not counting the legendary Steve Young, Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, Ronnie Lott, all of them. As far as 49ers that I actually got to watch, Frank Gore is my all-time favorite. Of course, he's the leading rusher in 49ers franchise history with 11,073 yards. And just you just cannot help but admire how he played the game, the impact that he had on such shitty teams nonetheless. Man, that's Frank Gore well deserved to be inducted into the 49ers Hall of Fame. Also, at halftime, the Niners honored the SFPD sergeant and the San Francisco General Hospital doctor that helped save Ricky Pearsall's life. For those of you that don't know, at the end of last month, a few weeks ago, the 49ers first round draft pick Ricky Pearsall got shot at Union Square in SF by a 17-year-old all the way from Tracy, California that attempted to rob him for his Rolex watch. Ricky Pearsall was able to survive and make an incredible recovery because, hey, he's already working out at the team. He, already, he was working out just a few days after the shooting, as a matter of fact. But, but awesome for the Niners to honor the SFPD sergeant and the SF General Hospital doctor that helped save Ricky Pearsaw's life. Because, I mean, that could have been as so bad. I mean, thank God the bullet was able to not strike any vital organs, which could have ended Ricky Pearsaw's life tragically, which would have been a tragic loss for not only the 49ers, but the NFL world in general. It just would have been awful. So thank, thank God for... You know, the SFPD, 
and SF General Hospital people that helped save his life. And awesome for the 49ers to be able to honor them at a halftime as well as honoring the legendary Frank Gore. So tomorrow the Niners got the Vikings, a team that they have not beat in Minnesota since 1992, since December 1992, about four years before I was born was the last time the 49ers have gotten a win in Minnesota, but which hopefully changes tomorrow. Of course, Sam Darnold, the Niners' backup QB last year, is the Vikings' starting quarterback. He had a hell of a game last week against the New York Giants where the Vikings got the win 28-6. to He threw for like 208 yards. He had a hell of a game. But the Niners cannot let this be a trap game. They need to come away with the victory and start out the season 2-0. But the fact that it's the last that they have not got, gotten a win there in Minnesota since 92 is crazy. And there's a lot of games that I think of when I think of all the games that they played in Minnesota. Of course, last year's loss, 20-17, to which was the second loss in a row where they ended up going on a three-game losing streak after starting off the year 5-0, and then lost to the Bengals, then the Vikings. Or excuse me, I'm sorry, lost to the Browns, the Vikings, and then the Bengals and started off the season 5-3. and three. But what comes to my mind the most when I think of all the losses that they've had in that dome is 2009 Week 3. Now, in 2009, the Niners started off the season 2-0, getting a win in Arizona, coming up against the defending NFC champion Cardinals and just a fun fact for you guys that was the first NFL game I ever attended was week one 2009 then they got the win candlestick week two against the Seahawks and they were up by four with a few seconds remaining in Minnesota week 309 and then the legendary Brett Favre throws a game winning touchdown pass to Greg Johnson which has been Considered by some to be the Minneapolis miracle. And the Niners ended up going 8-8 eight and eight that year. They would have had their first winning season in years, but instead they had to settle for their first non-losing season in years. So when I think of games that the Niners have lost in Minnesota, that's the first thing that comes to mind instantly. But hopefully they can break that losing streak come tomorrow. And like I said, Sam Darnold... I don't think he's, you know, I don't think he's an elite quarterback in any way, shape, or form, but he is going to be familiar with the Niners, and he had a hell of a game last week. And Jordan Addison, in his second year, is already considered the best receiver in the NFL. The Vikings also have Justin Jefferson, so they they got a hell of an offense. So the Niners cannot take them lightly at all. But let's get that win tomorrow. Bang, bang, Niner gang, Niner empire, one team, one family, one goal. DGTV is out. Peace.